The independence of Ghana would have been meaningless unless it is linked with the total emancipation for a different African state. It is with the word of Salifu Usafan Kwame Nkrumah that I used to introduce to you the theme and our topic of discussion today. You should know that we have two regional blocks created in Africa to resolve conflict and to see into either member states live in peace, mutual harmony, and have effective uh, presence in terms of mem sharing ideas as to how they operate. These two regional blocks that we all know, we have the ECOWAS, which is uh, operating at the ampit of the West African state, and we have the CIMAC. The two, are, the two have been living in a way that they resolve each o the conflict of each other to see into it that their members are protected and their members are share the same economic strength and might with each or with each other. But the big question now is what has become of the members of CEMAC? The members of CEMAC have been quite silent and quiet as far as happenings in Cameroon are concerned. We've been the ongoing Anglophone crisis for over four years now, with arms moving left and right, guns smoking from the dungeon of Kwakwa, moving to the hills of Gokitunja, and moving down to the wallow nature of Fontaine and other areas where the guns keep smoking. Yet, the CEMAC members are still sleeping. Many are tempted to ask if the members of CEMAC have gone on self-exile or are on holidays as far as happening in Cameroon is concerned. First, let us give ourselves a brief reminder as to what is happening next door at ECOWAS. Mali protests have been ongoing for two months, just two months, peaceful protests, and five times the ECOWAS delegations have been into Mali in order to resolve this. There have been series of negotiations with ECOWAS delegation led by the former president who happens to be good luck Ebele Jonathan who goes now to Mali to negotiate with his leaders. President Ibrahim Keita have refused the demands of the opposition which is to step down and from the numerous negotiations made between the ECOWAS team and the opposition leaders, the opposition leaders maintain the fact that the president must step down and reject the peace offer by ECOWAS uh, delegation. Yet, the ECOWAS delegation still maintain that there will be negotiation and negotiation is ongoing to see how they can resolve the conflict before it escalates into armed conflict. These are measures that many expect CEMAC to do as far as resolving the ongoing Anglophone crisis concerned. With thousands of lives lost, Thousands of villages burnt, thousands of people, hundreds of thousands of people internally displaced. The big question now is, has the economy of, uh, has CEMAC been compromised? This is our motion for today. I am Tamai Javis. I'll be right back. Thanks for joining us on this edition of our program, House of Commons. The motion for today is, has the uh, ECOWAS, has uh, CEMAC been compromised? Looking at what is happening next door, Mali, uh, the, a conflict, the peaceful protest in Mali has been ongoing for two months and ECOWAS has been there present for more than five times in negotiation. To introduce to you our panelists in the house, I'll begin by introducing to you uh, someone who is a historian and understands the dynamics of Africa. He is joining us live in Abuja. Thanks, Eric. Uh, thanks for joining us. Thank you for having me, James. It's a privilege to have you uh, in Nigeria. Yeah, um, yeah, it is. It's a privilege. Uh, all the is. Um, the circumstances surrounding my being here. But it's fine. Thank you for having me. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, he is a historian. In the studio, we have um, Robert Malafer, who happens to be a member of the Cent uh, CPDM, uh, that is the leading polit uh, political party in Cameroon. And he is joining us here in the studio to discuss on this issue as far as his party's position is concerned, and uh, which is his party's position is concerned. Robert, thanks for joining us. Uh, thank you very much. It's a pleasure to be here. Greetings to my co-panelists and uh, greetings <laughs> to all uh, Cameroonians watching us all over the world. It is a pleasure. Thank you once more. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Robert. Uh, we equally in the studio, we are joined by Mr. Uh, um, Mr. We are joined by another opposition party who is here with us. Um, you know, 
He is of the uh, MP3 party. His name is Kotem Princewill. Uh, Mr. Kotem Princewill from the MP3 party, thanks for joining us. You know, I always confuse your name based on your party. Uh, the MP3 always gets me confused. Thank you very much, Javis. Thank you to my major prime, like I always say. Um, good morning to all televiewers. It's time get you pull your chairs back, get a glass of water as we seek to uh, diagnose and and treat these pertinent issues that not only concern our country but now um, Africa as a whole, starting with the sub regions. Thank you very much. I uh, thank you very much too to you. We are joined by our youth advocate of uh, Kamuhit Assembly. Uh, he is equally someone trained in conflict and understand the dynamics as far as conflict is concerned, not just in Africa but within inter within the, the aspect of international conflict. He is Mr. Donald, Mr. Donald Gitang. Thanks for joining us. It's my pleasure, Mr. Jimmy, once more to be here to talk about how we as Africans can resolve the various conflicts we have in our continent. So it's a pleasure being here. Uh, these are the gentlemen with whom we are going to continue our program today. We will be expecting Fabrice Lena from the PAP party. If he will be joining us, uh, we shall introduce him to you too. Subsequently, I think we set the ball rolling. Gentlemen, uh, to kickstart with you, Robert Malenfer, we had an incident that just occurred in Cameroon. Uh, that was yesterday prior to this program where the, a divisional officer uh, accidentally, as many will say, and as the, he said, uh, shot the wife, the girlfriend, brother. Uh, that's the situation when uh, we lost, uh, when a Cameroonian lost his life, is really sad and painful, which uh, all Cameroonians really uh, will sympathize with the human being that have uh, lost the life. Uh, it so happened that uh, the divisional officer uh, was uh, preparing to come to Douala with his girlfriend. Unfortunately, when he was arranging his uh, pistol, we had this accident that occurred. And uh, unfortunately, the wife was uh, taken to the hospital. Unfortunately, we, uh, the unforeseen circumstances occurred. And uh, right now, uh, he's uh, with the police undergoing some questioning. So how uh, justice may take it full course. You know, we're in a country where law is respected. Many people could have been thinking that, okay, with his position, it was an accident, but he will not be called up by the police. But he has been called up, so we expect to see how things go. Uh, it's an accident, it's an accident. There is no information that they had a quarrel in the house, they had a fight, nothing, yeah. nothing. So it <laughs> just happened. They but were not, you can not, see they were not the not, only one in the house. They were not the only... Sorry. You cannot house. say for sure that there's no information. We are saying that the, the two of them were not the only one in the house, and other people have been questioned. So that's why I said there was no quarrel. Or oh, were you in the house with them? That you are saying that I'm not sure. But we'll get information, we'll tell our Cameroonian people, and that is what happened. However, yeah, it, is, well, however, however it is a sad uh, situation. We do not need to go into the polemics of who did what, who did what, but the Cameroonian has lost the life. We must sympathize and ask for justice. And that is how a Republican country should be. Okay, thank you very much. Um, Prince Will, uh, you, you, the incident occurred yesterday. Um, many are uh, asking themselves a series of questions as to what transpired, um, whether it was intentional or unintentional. Uh, your take on that? Um, thank you very much, Jarvis. Um, um, I want to talk concerning what uh, the other panelists who spoke before me just said. Uh, I sense a lot of uh, party politics and defending people in what he's saying. Uh, it is true I heard about this, but yet we are yet to have a confirmation from the state and from investigators. But um, rumors around, I don't want to capitalize on rumors, but you know, at times when things come around, it's like they say there's no, there's no smoke without a fire. Yeah, some people say, the uh, yeah, some people say uh, the wife was shot about five times, four times and the like. We are yet to have the investigation in full, but I want to say this, these incidents that occur, um, it has been so rampant of recent days with these administrators in this government where they think that, um, I don't want to capitalize, but it has been so rampant these days where we see administrators carry out acts and activities which are, I don't want to say illegal, but are not in line with their duties and the like. And it's becoming so rampant that it makes it almost become like a normal day activity. But while we are waiting on the investigators and other um, actors to give us actually what happened and inside of what happened um, we really want to cry on all Cameroonians as a whole 
because just um some few days ago we had uh, another incident that happened at phoenix voyage yeah. and, and can, last week a, a, a bike rider was was killed in bamenda because of, of 500 france so we not only 500 france i want to tell you yesterday um i was coordinating a community work in yaounde where uh, the mp3 had to help a community and a locality to see that uh, they can have a passage. You know, a locality has about uh, 300 students. Is actually in Suwa, and uh, one of the volunteers or uh, the MP3 members was voluntarily knocked down by my, uh, by a bike man. So these acts of vandalism and all the likes are too rampant these days in Cameroon that I really want to cry on all Cameroonians. We are all one, no matter your uh, uh, your status, whether academic or so whatsoever. We are all one people. We should have that respect for humans. We should have that dig that respect for human life, dignity, okay. because it is what we have to work. And the government has to see into all these things. The laws must be implemented. And most of these things happen these days because we see that most of the laws are uh, are not being implemented. We have good laws in the country, we'll but come, we'll come back. Remember, is remember, this is not okay. uh, much of a topic. I think we are just. Um, looking at just briefly, Mr. Donald, you are someone who deals with lots of youth. You've trained lots of people as far as um, youthfulness uh, or patriotism, uh, nation building, and peace is concerned. And when you look at the fact that a young girl the life, lost the life as early as this, and that the, the division officer to someone who is young, is very young, uh, what, what could be going on in the minds of both families? First of all, in the mind of the girl's family, as uh, we've heard the media has spoken, they are very, very angry, and they feel that the young girl was brutally murdered. They feel that. So uh, people say mistakenly. I just wish to ask. Uh, I know uh, senior judicial officers are supposed to carry guns, but are the guns supposed to be on on short bars? Are they supposed to be ready to shoot? I don't understand. How was his gun? And was it just once? Because many, it's alleged that he shot more than three times. Some say five. Was it just once? So those are the questions that are that are that are passing through our minds. And, but, and he's not living in a hostile environment. Not like in a hostile the, environment. And the phone area yes. where we may say that maybe that he's ready for, for for defense. What was he defending himself against? That his his gun was already on. But people on. say there was no quarrel between the two. Uh, so you heard my life was saying that that, that that there was and no he was about to he was adjusting his gun we will be taking our and we will be taking our and we will be taking our and we will come back we will set the ball rolling um yes want to apologize for that um in, in in it's normal it's normal to have such things happen we tested the ball straight rolling i'll begin with you feb sir eric on this topic because uh, you are a historian i want to start with you when we look at um both blocks semak and ECOWAS, is there something we are missing here because when you look at the actions yes they have one motive which is to protect the interests of member states to resolve their conflict and to ensure that members live um you know, in peace and harmony. Mali conflict has been on for just two months. ECOWAS more than five times have sent delegation and they are mediating. With the Anglophone crisis from 2016 to date, we are yet to see a concrete move by uh, SEMAC. Are they on holidays? Okay, uh, thank you very much, Davis. <laughs> um, when you look at uh, ECOWAS, the Economic Committee of West African States, if you look at their modus operandi, it is nothing very little compared to the experience we have in St. Mark. Why am I saying so? Mali is not just the first incident. As I speak to you two to three days ago, 
the president of the the, the the power, the giant of the ECOWAS, President Muhammad Buhari, moved over to Mali on a peace mission. So uh, it is just not the first case. We have had the ECOWAS court deliver, uh, make, bring peace in different conflict issues in the West, within the West African sub-region. It is, uh, there are many cases. We have the case of Yaya Jame when he, the former president of uh, Gambia, the Gambia, who, who, who lost the election but refused to concede or conceded and changed his mind 24 hours after this particular issue was resolved by the ECOWAS. We have different cases of that, of that nature that the ECOWAS has always intervened. So um, if, you, if, if you look at the whole situation, you realize that the uh, Economic Community of West African States, ECOWAS, it's a, a sub-regional body within the African continent that is pretty serious. Um, not just about solving conflict issues within the West African sub-region, but also about how they harmonize their structures, how they harmonize the, 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 the borders, how they harmonize, they try to harmonize things and make sure movement is it's fine within the West African sub-region. But uh, this is not, I don't think this is exactly the case when you look at CEMAC. Uh, we've had the, 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 the crisis, the uh, crisis for the former British South in Cameroon struggling for independence since 2016 that it skyrocketed, all, even though it has been dead before then. But we saw the peak from 2016 and from 2016 up until date, we are in 2020, this is four years and counting, we have not gotten any substantial intervention from any neighboring state. I personally look at this as... Um, not just an aspect of the of the CEMAC sub-region not being serious about handling issues, but also uh, about the fact that uh, Cameroon seems to be the boss of the CEMAC sub-region. So it is like, uh, look, looking at it, first of all, this CEMAC sub-region is first of all in the feast of France. And if France is interested or France is saying that the crisis we cannot have a real dialogue, a dialogue that is of good faith, all-inclusive dialogue, not the, the, the sham that occurred recently in Yaoundé in the name of nation, major national dialogue. If France says we cannot have an all-inclusive dialogue that is of good faith, and uh, then definitely no other country within the CEMAC, the Central African sub-region, can go against that. But, 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 when, when we, when we see uh, the same Mali, France has the, the, the Astro, the, the Astro, the, 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 I think you should be having about, um, uh, more than uh, 3,000 troops in Mali. Yeah, 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 you are, you are right, you are, you are right, but, okay, I think the whole idea is about the, the Anglo-Saxon heritage, uh, that is a, that is a mixture in the ECOWAS, in the ECOWAS system, but that is not the case with CEMAF. The Anglo-Saxon heritage, it's, uh, it's that, because I look at the, the, the influence of Britain in Africa post-colonially, it's uh, completely a different case when you look at France. We have French Equatorial Africa completely under France until date. We have more than 500 billion euros going to France every year from these countries. That is a whole world, a whole lot. Okay. This is not the case with the West African okay. region, because I think... The British heritage is not the same. So Britain is does not have the interest, and so for some reason, ECOWAS always find a way to solve their problems. ECOWAS problems, ECOWAS problems, they prefer ECOWAS solutions. Okay, I don't Th think this is thank the you, FEFSA. We'll stand by, we'll come back to you. Let's come back, let's uh, talk to other members here in the studio to get, uh, I see, I begin with you, Robert Malanfe, the point raised by FEFSA that you uh, were not in cognizance with um, is... ECOWAS, um, ECOWAS is active, CEMAC is not active. Four years on, thousands of homes went down, thousands of lives lost, hundreds of thousands internally displaced, guns keep smoking in Aquaya, guns keep smoking in Boom, guns keep smoking in uh, Manyeme as we speak right now. And CEMAC is seemingly sleeping. Are they on vacation? You see, uh, we have five zones in Africa, ECAS, ECOWAS, EMAC, and the rest of them. And uh, the crisis in, uh, the, in Cameroon is different from the one we see in Mali. You see, the case of Cameroon, a part of the country is fighting to separate. 
which is different from what is happening in Mali. You see, ECOWAS have not intervened in Nigeria to talk about the Biafrans that want to separate. And we still know that in Ghana, there's a section in Ghana that is fighting right now to separate where they have a little bit of uh, uh, violence there. But you see that ECOWAS cannot uh, officially intervene in such a uh, situation, which come back to the situation in Cameroon. However, uh, it would be biased to say that... Um, in Semak Zone, nothing has been done just because maybe some people have not seen those presidents coming to Cameroon physically, like maybe they have done in the case of uh, Mali. But uh, all the countries in Semak are collaborating in their own ways, uh, one or two. We've seen some of them sending uh, letters, we've seen some of the ambassadors of this country going to the presidency to propose, like the one of Chad, to propose a solution on how we can move on uh, to solve this English, this problem that is happening in our country. However, um, at the level of CEMAC zone, really, I still go back to us Cameroonians to say that we are to solve our problems and not to rely on international bodies to come and help us solve our problems. The government has done everything and the government has followed the, 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 the structure on how to handle a uh, crisis. That is why you see all these bodies there. The United Nations is there. He's silent. The African Union is silent. The Amazon, all of them, they are there giving their own, okay, do this, do this. They will not intervene. What I mean by silence is that they will not intervene because they are moving, uh, watching the government. Even when you look at different countries, they are there, they just give their advice. They can't intervene the way people think is because the government of Cameroon has followed the structure on how to solve problems. They gave their national amnesty. When we talk, uh, people say ceasefire. The government already demand for ceasefire by asking for people to drop their arms and creating a DDRC uh, 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 center for people to go and drop their arms. They talk about amnesty. The president have freed people in prison. We have seen some of them in the bushes with guns that they have dropped their I'm guns and they are relaxing. Point, huh? You see, Nyambere is in Yaounde. All of them they have dropped their gun and. And uh, they are uh, in Yaoundé enjoying and feeling free. Those are the things that uh, we should be able to uh, uh, to say that okay, things are moving. Now we are uh, we had a grand national dialogue. Now many people don't understand this. People insult the grand national. If we like, we have one hundred national dialogue. There is no dialogue that everybody will come from it satisfy one hundred percent to say it is a it's a good one. We should be honest with these things, and we know now we are talking about reconstruction. The common man is very very satisfied and begging, happy with the government for the reconstruction. But what are some uh, political parties doing? They are there. What are some political parties? Some guys in the diaspora and some guys in what are they doing? They are busy shouting. We want dialogue, we want dialogue because they are looking for positions. That's what they want. And the common man is there suffering, living in the bush. No. We should respect but, the um, in place. Let me, let me, and let me do, do a follow-up. I appreciate uh, what uh, let me do a follow -up. have done. Let, let me do a follow-up with what you said. I think there are three concerns you raised. First of all, that the people are there in the bushes, um, which is contrary to what... Um, uh, the, 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 the head of the reconstruction team uh, said because he said that there were no people living in the bushes. Uh, is there not can we say that your party has a kind of... No, no, you are getting it all because wrong. Because he said, he said, and I quote, that there are no people living in the bushes. But you are... He said people, are, people are, are not living in the bushes. But you just... People are, just no, say I said people are in the bushes. I don't yeah, say people yeah. live in the okay. bushes. Well, when well, there well, are well, gunshots... Well, listen, when there are gunshots, people run to the bushes for safety and they come back. Okay. We have been seeing gunshots. When gunshot happens, people go to the bushes. And when uh, everything is calm, they come back to the house. I did not say okay, they it. are living in the and bushes. I, it, so another, please, uh, no, I get it. Okay, I get okay, it. Okay, another follow-up from what you just said before coming to other members of the panel. This for clarity. Uh, you said um, the conflict in North and Southwest region is different from the conflict in Mali now, as we speak. But in 2016, when we this conflict started, we, there was no arm. When we had the consortium that was formed, we had the formation of the interministerial committee. It's still like Mali. It's the same situation like Mali. At that point in time, Semak did nothing. And even when, when let, me, let, me, let me let me no, let me let me okay. show you you speak. I just want to get a clarity from your position that you're saying, so that we the, the person watching also understand your position. And you said that. Um, in that they cannot intervene because the common government has done a lot. When we talk about a lot, first of all, 
What happened when we had the peaceful protest in 2016 when lawyers and teachers were beaten? Moving right to December 2017, when we, it was still peaceful protest. Can we say that uh, they were still happy that Kamon government had, was doing enough? All right, uh, thanks for your question. Uh, firstly, uh, when this crisis started, we saw, I see it, ambassadors representing Chad and the other countries went to the presidency and they gave their own uh, 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 opinion on how this problem can be solved, that's intervention. So uh, let me clarify what I'm, uh, the perspective of intervention. There is an intervention that people in the diaspora have been promising the suffering people that that particular type of intervention will be, which is a foul, it will never ever occur. But these uh, 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 neighboring countries have been interfering, giving that opinion. So we should know the two types of intervention I'm talking about. There are those, all of them in the same zone have intervened to give their opinion. Countries in the world have intervened to give their opinion. Uh, in Africa, the okay. African Union address, they have intervened to give their opinion okay, on how solution now. can Stand. go on. Yeah. But the intervention that some people in the diaspora are deceiving those in the Northwest and Southwest region that they will be sorry. That particular one will never ever occur. Uh, thank you very much. Um, let me come to you. You were agitating Prince Will. Um, you listen to my brother here, um, Robert, he talked about the fact that the conflict in Mali and that in North and South West is different. That's why the ECOWAS will not intervene, in, I mean, SEMAC will not intervene in, 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 in Anglophone crisis. He equally said the common government has done a lot that there are people who are in the bushes, that, but they are not living in the bushes. Jarvis, um, I listened to, I took off my time, I listened to him very carefully. Very, very carefully. And I want to say this, um, this is the reason why CIMAC is different from ECOWAS. The first reason, it would, have, it would have not been my first reason, but just give me the first reason. You know why? Because we have people of such nature in CIMAC. Now, going back to what they we used to are in CIMAC. No, when I say people of such nature, you get the difference, okay? Let me come. It's not just about backing people up. But now, I totally disagree with him because, um, well, at some extent, we may get um, some convergent we may meet met from the onset i disagree with him why do i say so because uh when we look at the semak region and the equas region it's not because of the crisis the difference in the nature of the crisis but we have to look at um things in the right way do you know what they call the r2p that's responsibility to that's the responsibility to protect this is being enshrined under article 138 and 139 of the United Nations Charter. What does this article actually give? You know, the United Nations is that umbrella organization that rules the way after the United uh, after the League of Nations. So all other uh, regional and sub-regional organizations, such as the ECOWAS and the SEMACAM, they they also have they take some inspiration from this uh, international organization. By this uh, um, chapter or section of the or, uh, paragraph of the United Nations Charter. It gives the obligation of every state to take responsibility to protect its citizens. So it is not like the CEMAC is different from the ECOWAS because Cameroon is talking about separation. No. It is the place of every country, um, whether organization or sub-regional organization, to protect, take the responsibility to protect its citizens. Like I say, it's being enshrined under section 138 and 139 of the United Nations Charter. So by this, this law, or this section every state has that responsibility now why did this section have to come up this this section started with um uh the former secretary general for the one who is an africa um kofi kofi, and, kofi and, and, and that was after the serbia and rwanda genocide you understand because before this time state has re, state had discovered it looks like because of the principle of sovereignty of states states felt that they have that power which is untouchable which is not limited so they can do everything because of the sovereignty the fact that they are the ones to take care within their national territory to handle whatever thing is inside so we had a lot of atrocities that came up within this period you had that genocide in rwanda you have Serbia, and so on and so forth so the world could not sit back and wash their hands and watch 
what it was happening. That is why Kofi Annan, at that time, he went up, suggested with the United Nations, and using one of his uh, resolution, I think that was 1999 before 2000, they had to set up these rules. But these rules had not come into place. Why? Because at that time, they were still experimenting it, and states at that time, you remember, it's this same time which uh, 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 the U.S., the U.S. had invaded uh, uh, Syria. Was the invasion? The U.S. invasion of Syria was taking place. So all these issues had to look at. They had to look at it and actually understand that this it was obligate. It was obligatory and mandatory for an international organization or for a particular rule which would go above state sovereignty because states are taking upon their, their self to do things which are which were not uh, 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 which were unorthodox. So with this. You look at these articles actually give he has three pillars the feel the first pillar is that of state responsibility to protect its citizens the second pillar is that of state uh, of intervention that's where other states can come in to intervene or help the parties within the same community like the ECOWAS and the CIMAP. and the third pillar is what we call uh, 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 uh intervention by force which is reserved for the United Nations only. So, by this, you realize that the state... But oh, you saw that observation uh, intervention by force occurred in, in, in Yaya Jamen, where in, no, the more forces were already uh, preparing to storm the country. No, look, it wasn't... It wasn't the, we can cite a better example with uh, that of Libya. That is where we can cite a better example. So yeah, Jamey, they had not gone in. We're talking about intervention. But they were, they were already yeah. on standby. Humanitarian is human. Yes, but they, they were already on standby. That's what we talk about humanitarian uh, uh, assistance. Where they had to come in. Because they are giving Yaya Jamey a 24 hours automaton and with all their warship and machine gun ECOMO. That is we saw ECOMO. That ECOMO. is not where we are. What we are talking, what we are trying to talk about is to look at this instance. Why is it that ECOWAS intervenes and CIMAC doesn't intervene yes of course so i'm trying to make you uh, make you understand and the fellow panelists on the other side to understand that it is not because uh um CIMAC probably is too much and the government has a lot of power and they have mastered no it's because one thing is it is, it is because international law has put in place that which is an obligation look the law is the law international law has put in place and if CIMAC, if ECOWAS uh, uh, remember ECOWAS is a, a mixture uh, of of um, many states which are not uh, necessarily which were not necessarily the French colonies, unlike the Sema region, which were just the French colonies. That's where we can meet or with the historian when he spoke. But the difference is with the ECOWAS. ECOWAS has advanced so much in democracy and uh, 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 more than the Semak. We really look at the. Um, uh, it's true, right? Of course, I'm glad you're happy. You you. And now uh, let's let's get your, contextual. Your, let's get contextually. Um, what is keeping Semak from intervention? What is keeping Semak? This, this is where I was coming to. So what is actually keeping Semak from intervention is the fact that within the Semak zone, there is that, Semak is not that void, it's not that powerless to, to handle, the, uh, to, for the state to come into place to see how they can look for a, a common solution to help the Anglophone crisis and other crises that are happening. Remember, in Mali, it's not only about uh, poverty and mismanagement, but the, the problem is 90%, where 90% of the population of Mali live in the south, it is where the jihadis, uh, the Al-Qaeda and the others have been hitting so hard. And this problem of the Mali, the Mali, the Mali problem is not, it didn't begin today. There's something about 2012. That's before Ibrahim Boubacar took power. Yeah, we understand that Ibrahim Boubacar, there was, there was conflict that is in that northern that region. The thing is, at this level, you realize that with the conflict at that level, it, uh, it necessitates and it precipitates what? An uh, uh, intervention. Okay. And this, and the... the the, the 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 states within this region are like i said they are far more advanced in democracy of which in the sema region we lack that will the sema presidents lack that will they lack that voluntariness to advance their democracy and political will so which therefore actually retard them from oh. coming out it doesn't mean that because ECOWAS, oh, it doesn't mean that ECOWAS is too advanced. Um, ECOWAS has more powers than CEMAC, or CEMAC is a different organization. No. So is that the that willingness? The lack, is that, that, the the lack of that political will. So we should push the willingness now, as far as this, this is now, dying. This more than, more than, more than, more than uh, uh, 28,000 people in Nigeria, plus 28,000 in Nigeria. Uh, hundreds of thousands of people, uh, I mean thousands of people are in the bushes. Whether they are living there or they are not living there, they are in the bushes. We have 
about more than three to five thousand people are dead by the conflict. Thousands of homes went down, and still not much of a concern. Okay, this this takes me now to the other part. I want to ask you: Who is at this level of uh, Mali? Who is leading the the opposition? Of course, Muhammad uh, Diko. When you read about the history of Muhammad Diko, you realize that. He is an activist, unlike the Cameroonian. He was an ally no. to the. To of course, the, he helped uh, Iba, uh, Ibrahim Buka to come to power. But remember, he also uh, uh, not uh, he he also masterminded the fall of um, the prime minister not long ago. And he had not only that, he also pushed. I think it was in two thousand and three, two thousand four. He actually forced the then president of Mali to to put out a law which had give uh, which give more power to women but that is not the problem what i'm trying to say look at the Cameroon situation there was a time west of cameroon i want to talk kawala and the other leaders they went out they asked for the population let's take a, a, a peaceful protest what were the other political leaders say i don't want to call names but you know they, they said uh, 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 politics is not in the streets but look at what is happening in mali Mahmoud diko is someone who has that will like the okay. people we had in cameroon but he is doing what is right we'll in. why in cameroon we had those people but none of them will come no it's okay it's okay the other day saying that if being a leader and leading his country to the right position uh, means he's a politician then yes he's a politician i think let's get this clear he is an imam a very popular imam and an activist not a politician and he's an activist and he's an imam not a politician mr donald you follow the conversation uh you're following that with Fetsa eric alongside let me come now to you we are you have listened to both men donald said um Malefe said people uh government has done enough and still keep doing enough to resolve the ongoing anglophone crisis and that the government is open the government had called for ceasefire by creating ddr centers and by asking that people should drop their arms according to what uh Robert Malafe uh, articulated. You followed what the uh, prince said, and now let's get your views. What is happening? You are a conflict expert. You are someone who is into conflict. What is happening that two regional blocks, Cameroon is politically located in Semak, but uh, geographically located in West Africa. If we look at the 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 the, the, the objectivity here, and Semak 2016 peaceful protest. Nothing was done, no negotiation, consortium leaders arrested, Semak was still quiet. We have now degenerated into a civil war and armed conflict. Semak is still docile. Are they on exile? Um, Mr. Javis, I'm very, very happy to, to, to cue in to come in. To begin with, let me cue in from what Mr. Robert said. He said the conflict in Mali is different from the one in uh, Northern South West. He claims that Mali. There's no separation. Birds in Cameroon, there is separation. So, Sema cannot intervene. Mm. That's not true. In 2012, the Islamic violent movement seized the northern part of Mali and were demanding for separation. ECOWAS still went there to intervene. If he doesn't, let him go back to history. So, it's not about. It's not. Let him land. Let him land. Let him land. Let him land. It's just that at times we, we sign pacts treaties that we do not partake in for, on the 9th of uh, september 1994 cameroon and the other state signed the the treat the pact of non-aggression then on the 20 on, on the 26th of february 1999 the semak formed that council for maintenance of peace and security and that council gave them power to intervene each time there is conflict and if you ask me the two blocks ECOWAS is always intervening with semak hardly intervenes they do that in their own way but they are limited let me give you the reason why they are limited french policy in africa semak is directly under the hand of france when it comes to french policy so the semak states hardly take or take take up an action without consulting it's all written down on treaties we know independent treaties we we, we all know that so the main the main policy is the uh, French policy in Africa. That's the main reason. That's the main reason, I think so. So that's yeah, 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 Semak, I will not say, like he said, Semak has tried their best. They have inter and you, do you, do you are a conflict person. Will you listen to what Robert is saying, that the government of Canada... No, 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 let me... Let me no, 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 And no, that no. there are people are not living in the bushes, but there are people in the bushes. How do we reconcile these polemics? When it comes to conflict resolution, eh, there's what we call a win-win. 
but yours truly we want to win everything there is a win-win there, there are green and red lines the lines that you will not let go and the lines that you will let go but when it comes with the government you you can you cannot pick out a green and a red line everything for the government is a red line they are you and they are not shaking on their point but when it comes to conflict resolution there is a green there's what you are able to give up for the other thing and it's what you are able to take yes okay no separation fine no federation fine no this fine mm. so what what are we trying to give up for the people of cameroon what are our green lines it's true ddr has come but if you follow conflict but he said it's a ceasefire uh, he's calling you an expert can we equate that to a ceasefire he said um, people to drop um, their arms. Robert, we are coming we are coming he yeah. government never said there is a ceasefire that common government was the first to cover a ceasefire by creating a ddr center and by calling for those who are in the bushes with guns to drop them and come like political sons and daughters of the state. Can I take that? No, he's still talking. Yes, you take that. And no. we'll get to first before you come. If I'm not mistaken, I'm sure there was an order given for for military and security forces to return to the to the barracks and leave that was in January and leave the place where they are leave the community and return to the barracks <laughs> as a way of ceasefire. I just wish to ask him if that has happened. Has that happened? Have all the military and security forces gone back to the barracks? Security forces. The, mm -hmm. Has the military gone back to the barracks? Military are in the barracks. And there are few that are around. Even in the extreme north, there are few that are around. Military Mr. Robert, Mr. Robert, Mr. Robert, Mr. Robert, Mr. Robert, is there to protect Mr. Robert, citizens Robert, and their Mr. property. Mr. Jevis, Mr. Jevis, let me come in. It's because of people like this that no it's because of not people like this because of mindsets Mindset. like like this that we keep on blaming our government. our government and our, and, and our nation yes it's because of mindsets like this we we all love cameroon and we all want this thing to be resolved but when you say that the government has done every other thing Every other proper way. Okay. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. No, no, let me tell you something. Yes. Let me tell you something. No, no, wait, wait, Mr. 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 Robert. Mr. Mr. Robert, there are ways to resolve a conflict. There are things that are done. There are prerequisites that are done. Have we followed that? I don't I just want to ask. Okay, I'll come back. Let me come. Thanks, are you there? Yeah, Ramon. Okay, I'll be coming to you in the next one or two minutes. Let me quickly uh, ask a follow-up question to Prince Will. Prince Will, uh, you were agitating uh, when Malefi said government has done enough to resolve this conflict. Let me, maybe, uh, maybe I, I, I cue you in before coming to FEBSA. Yeah. The government, when this conflict started in 2016, <laughs> the government created an interministerial oral committee for, for both lawyers and the teachers, and that was headed by Paul Mingo Gogoma in Boya, in, in, in Ibamenda, mm -hmm. when the teachers and lawyers had their consortium. The government created two billion subvention. The government redeployed teachers to their uh, areas of competence. The government again gave ministerial position like that of uh, territorial administration, a high profile ministry to the, an anglophone. The same government gave secondary education to an anglophone. The government came again and released prisoners. The government came again and created this health center. Can we for sure say that the government is not making strive in resolving this you conflict? You forgot another one, Balingwari. Balingwari Commission. Continue to to you, um, all all those 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 now, can we for sure, can we just say that the government is not doing effort at all? Those are empty. I will really say those were empty efforts no, that were made. Why should I? No, let me. No, let him land. Let him land. Let him land. Let him land. We'll get to first. Let him land. Let him land. Yes. Okay. Let's begin with that of the commission from Gogomo to that of uh, uh, um, uh, Peter Mafani Musonge to the rest, as we want to call me, Filimonyang and the rest and the rest. Now, going to disarmament like he spoke about. Disarmament, to be honest, that was a very nice commission that was put in place, and the ideology, the idea given in place was very nice one by the go by the government. But what was the implementation? The implementation was used by some of those elites, those guns in the public uh, in the government to make more money out from the people. Why did they do that? Because most of the or some of them at that time had their militia groups. And I, 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 you can you can you for uh, sure say they have militia groups. Do you have? Everybody? Can I continue? Yes. So, most of them, or some of them, had some groups, militia groups that were in place, alleged militia groups, or militia groups, <laughs> whatever you want to put it. No, there are different things. You had, no, you had, you had. Let him lie, let him lie. Please, you are taking time. time to. He has to leave it for this case. Okay, because we have to go to the teacher here. 
Okay, <laughs> so no, of course. So what we are trying to see, what I'm saying yeah, is that yeah, those yeah, commissions, yeah. like a disarmament commission, when we were those who like the national during the national dialogue, grand national dialogue, they brought those whom they said they were from the uh, uh, disarmament commission. Of course, we, uh, we I will call the Yannick Kwaku and the rest. They were there. Go to the to the roots. Go to the field and ask if Yannick Kwaku and the other people. Were from the dis uh, we were taken from the disarmament uh, 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 center and during that period were actually those who voluntarily laid down their arms were actually those who were not instigated to come up no when we're talking on tv we shouldn't behave and forget the reality because we are talking to the world at large we're talking to our country and they know what we are saying and they know the wrong and the right so we shouldn't think because we're in front of tv and we say what we want to say so this commission had the idea behind the creation of the uh, commission was a very nice one, but the implementation of this summary uh, uh, was wrong. Now we move next. I'll come point. back to you. Summarily, I just want to get it clear. I'll come back to you. We have time. We'll come back. Summarily, I just want to get. Can you for sure say that up upon all what I uh, enumerated from what Robert was saying, even including the MND Major National Dialogue, the government? Can you say the government has done nothing to resolve this conflict? The national. All what you've said, if we have to globalize to 100, means that the government is 10. That's his opinion. That's his opinion. He has a right to his opinion. Of course. As, uh, yes, he opinion. has his right to his opinion. Uh, first, uh, Eric, let's come back to you as a historian. We have been looking this as we have been talking about this aspect from different pers perspectives, and um, that takes us to a question as to uh, you've listened to my panelists uh, here in the studio. You are joining us live in uh, Nigeria. Um, what can you make of these claims, counter accusation accusations? Can we say that the, 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 the common government has not been doing a lot in the Dominic's country? Looking at the place of Semak. Javis. Yes. I didn't get it in the last part. Of, I didn't get the last part. Maybe yeah, 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 I think I get it now. What I'm saying is that no, I think it's fine. Okay. It's a, what I'm saying is that can we say that um, the government says they have created the national uh, the the the, the Bangladeshian commission? They have given two billion subvention France that uh, they have they have uh, redeployed teachers that they have uh, stabilized the ministerial appointment and it's an anglophone who still remains the prime minister head of government and that um, they have uh, by shock created a DR center in order to ensure that people effectively uh, drop their arms and are welcome like political son. They said they have launched a reconstruction of homes destroyed as a result of the ongoing anglophone crisis. The government says that uh, they have yeah, they gave invitations too for those in diaspora to attend the MND, but they turned down the invitation. Can you, as a historian, can we for sure say that the government has not done anything meaningful in resolving this conflict? Uh, Javis, it's as simple as that. The government has not done anything meaningful in resolving this conflict. Listen, uh, history is uh, before we we, uh, we find ourselves where we are. Yeah, we have been, this thing has historical underpinnings and we have been through different stages before we are getting to this point. Uh, it was very clear when, uh, after 40 years of being with Nigeria under the Eastern region, that uh, our, our, we decided that, it, that the people of the former British Southern Cameroon decided in Fumban to agree that they are reuniting with uh, French Cameroon. There were clear, there were clear points that, that stipulated, that were stipulated as what is going to be what is going to guide the new the new union listen we cannot run away from these facts these are facts historical facts and these are the exact causes of the crisis we find ourselves today if we don't go back to these root causes we won't be able to profile a solution talking about the major national dialogue first of all i want to i want to uh call that thing by its real Name. Uh, it wasn't a major national dialogue. If it was a major national dialogue, then it was a major national dialogue in Cameroon as at, at its boundary in 1st January 1960. Because that was a monologue as far as I'm concerned. But you say, you say a monologue. Side. Maybe let me cue you in. You say a monologue. But many, the government will say that they gave invitations to the non-state armed groups like Mark Barata, Tapangaivo, and the government called for uh, someone like Nijon Fundi, Barista Kongo Bala Felix, who was the head of the consortium at the time, 
called Christian Kajinatumi, the government called for someone like Padi Asanga, the government called for uh, a host of others who attended the major national dialogue. And you are talking about the issue that it was come on by 1961. What can we make of this? Okay, what I, what, I'm, what I simply mean by if it was, if it can be called a major national dialogue, then it was a major national dialogue within French Cameroon as at its independence in 1961. What do I mean by this? What I mean by this is that 1st of January 1960, Cameroon as a country had, had independence from France. This was totally exclusive of the British Cameroons, or may I say the British Southern Cameroons. So now, for us to find ourselves in a situation where we are together again, it means some agreements were made, some points were agreed upon, and uh, these points that were agreed upon are totally non-existent today. That is where I am coming from. Then going to the major national dialogue, you say the government says they sent invitations to uh, non-state non armed groups, as you would like to call them, and all that. Uh, Jarvis, we have been through history, and we have seen crises, we have seen revolutions, there is no way you say you organize a dialogue for people to come to the table in good faith and you call it in your own backyard. Now, they also talk about, now we cannot have a major national dialogue, not have a dialogue in your own. It is not possible. That is a wrong venue for any meaningful dialogue. That's one. Two, we cannot have a dialogue without third party involved. That's two. We cannot have a dialogue without any third party involved. A third party of good faith. A union, like the African Union, like the United Nations, we cannot have a dialogue without any of these organizations involved as the mediator. Okay. That stuff, that sham, that took place in Yaoundé was a monologue. They were invited, they said they were invited, they were invited where? Even the ceasefire Cameroon is talking about what kind of a ceasefire. You talk about ceasefire and the, the, our regions is still being militarized to the core and you say people should the, 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 the rebels should okay, um, Fesa, 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 the, the Fesa, um, are still very much let me cue you in on this um mr robert of cpdm at no after you will speak he will come in um said the government was the first to call for ceasefire that the government called for ceasefire by creating the DDR center calling for peace loving cameroonians to come and surrender their arms in this center such that they can build the nation as it is now. So is that not ceasefire? No, it's not ceasefire, Javis. Uh, let, let's, let's look at this thing contextually. I think one of the panelists is uh, someone with the knowledge in conflict management, peace and conflict resolution. Yes, that's the That wasn't a ceasefire. Why do I say? Yeah, that wasn't a ceasefire. It wasn't a ceasefire because the reason is simple. You cannot say it's a ceasefire and you say the rebels should hand down their weapons and the military of the, the, as the government, the BR military, they are still very much armed and in the southern Cameroons. Okay. How do you expect this? Listen, this is this is defense. This is not. A, they are declared president. They are declared war on the Ambazonian people. This is self defense. So if you are talking about ceasefire, you who declare the war has to hand down your weapon, put down your weapon. Okay. Then you talk about it. The, but then we can go about a measured dialogue in good faith with the third party involved. That's it. Okay, we'll be coming back to you. Um, stand, stand by, Madam Faye. Let me come back to you. You've listened to the various panelists. Let's maintain the course of discussion, um, like CEMAC. Many will say France is the speed breaks of Anglophone crisis because if, if it was ECOWAS, Britain has given a free hand to the uh, uh, West African communities to resolve their conflict from their ideological, cultural, and educational perspective in such a way that they can best understand each other. But with this in, in Semak, that France is calling the shot. You are of CPDM. What is the CPDM position when we look at this Semak intervention in Cameroon? Cameroon is a sovereign state, and no country has influence on what happened in Cameroon. If some people are excited to talk about new colonialism, to think that uh, Cameroon, uh, France controls Cameroon, no, they are making a mistake. 
if they want to know about that they should look at the company that have left the poor they should look at the company that was taking care of sonara they are no longer there they should look about the uniform people that were taking care of our security they are no longer there they will know the country that are there there are certain things that i would not like to open up so in regards to new colonialism we know that france is no longer there that's why some people are going out to lobby because they want to be president and sell the country anyway that's not the question let me come back to your question let us talk about issues with regards to the semax zone now when you talk of intervention we have military intervention which i say will never happen however even in ECOWAS, military intervention have not occurred so far i don't know any country where the militaries of ECOWAS have carried their armor car dive into another they were about to they were about to they were already at the border of um thank you but they did not enter gambia where thank you they did not enter you are saying with me that they were about to but we had the comoc forces in sierra leone there where they come up forces in Sierra Leone during the Sierra Leone war, they 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 see war in Sierra Leone. Are they are they not were they not come up forces? They did not enter. We are now. I don't want to get it clear. I may, I may be wrong. So far, we, so far, we are talking about Mali and ICC. No force have intervened in Mali so far. Now, heads of states have decided to go to Mali to discuss with the president the same has happened in cameroon where representatives of this country the ambassadors that represent the presidents of this country have gone to the unity palace and give their opinion on how this problem will be solved so when it comes to intervention of giving ideas and supporting the government all these countries in Sema zone have intervened with the representative of their uh, ambassadors at the Unity Palace. We've seen it. And they have given their opinion. Unless it's another type of intervention that people are screaming for. Now, after the, um, the, the presence of the United Nations, which is the biggest body, the next body we have has to do with Francophonie and Commonwealth. Now, when you say the influence of France, like France dictate, France does not dictate. However, let me, let me cue you in. You continue mm -hmm. briefly. Let me cue you in. You when, we, when we had when we had the issue of IR4, Florence was reported. The French ambassador went uh, to the pri to the to the presidency, and there was a tete a tete discussion. But we had the uh, release of prisoners. The French ambassador went, and the prisoners were released. Was this saga came up? The French ambassador went to the and met with the president and came and gave a press briefing that he spoke with the president, and there will be an independent inquiry to the matter, which we have not still had in Gabu when the Gabu incident. Happened, the French ambassador went to the head of state and they discussed, and immediately the head of state issued a communicate. I created a commission of inquiry. Can we for sure say that this is these are not evidences to show that France is pressing the body? When you count, when, when, you, when you count the number of times, the, uh, the when you say this time, this time, this time, the uh, ambassador of France said, said, Are you saying that only the ambassador of France have been speaking? Yes, you Other you countries have been talking. We have visited the uh, same. Now we should get this thing clear. With diplomacy, when a representative of the president visits a president, right, and they discuss, he comes out with people to interview him. He gives a brief on what they discuss. But I feel that most Cameroonians think that when they discuss and the uh, 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 ambassador of France come out and he, and he discuss what happened, people assume that that ambassador gave instruction on what to be done wrong. Uh, the ambassador discuss what uh, just brief people on what they discuss because uh, the camera the cameras and the journalists are there. And we should also realize that in diplomacy, what is being spoken in back door is not necessarily what the ambassador will come in front of camera and say. So when I see some of you judging what uh, a journalist, uh, uh, an ambassador will come in front of a camera and say, I, I, I just understand. So the French it, ambassador is, is no, 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 no. So the French ambassador light that there will not be light about the commission to be created. You are, for talking, about, are you saying? You are no. talking about lies. I did not say any ambassador lied i said in diplomacy uh, in diplomacy <laughs> ambassador have the way of briefing their discussion and discuss in private that is what i said that 
when an ambassador discuss with a president and he comes and is given briefing in diplomacy the way he will present it and the way he discussed okay. with the president like is now, yeah, 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 now you said i said no. That the ambassador lied, and I don't remember talking about lies. No, no, so we should be honest. No, Madam Fair, I'm yeah, coming. Yeah, I know I'm, I'm coming to you. I'm coming to you. Madam, no, I'm coming to you. You said to be a gentleman. I'm coming to you. 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 i am coming to you 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 i ECOWAS is not African Union. ECOWAS is just a subset of African Union. If we look at the organizational chart of Africa, you see that when you come to ECO, to African Union, you move now to the regional block. From the regional block, you move now to the different countries uh, like what we have, the Fonny and mm -hmm. Commonwealth, where you move down to these different levels. Now, when we look at the aspects as of intervention, what is happening? What yeah, is like I began, I, 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 I was like I was saying to him, when you look at that two, those two chapters or uh, articles that I talked about, 138 and 139, which talked about what? Responsibility to protect. And the second pillar, we talk about intervention. That's what we are talking about. And this at this level, we talk about intervention of uh, these member states which are in an organization. Now, he made mention of what? He talked about that CEMAC is not... Uh, after the United Nations, we have the Francophonie and the Commonwealth. I don't see how that possible is. Look... And when these two chapters are talking about, when these two chapters and the second pillar is talking about intervention, we are looking at this level where it could be at the global level of the United Nations. But I said there is a third pillar that brings the United Nations or whatsoever because it comes with force. The second pillar talks about what? A friendly discussion, negotiation. I want us to keep, no, the the thing, I want us to keep us we are coming out to look at it. From this of course. Level. Now we are coming to this level. Why is it that the SEMA has been unable to gather themselves and get a solution at least like the, what we are seeing in Mali today? Now, on this level, I will say first is the lack of the political and democratic will. And what actually brings up that lack, uh, the lack of the political and democratic will? The, 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 the undeniable one is the, 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 the continuous uh, 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 I don't know, neo colonialism of France, which France has a very hard grip, grip in all, all the SEMA countries, their economy and their politics in one way or the other. Okay? How does France actually play this? I was, I was not in France with Manuel Macron, but we were here together when we watched him on live and he gave an interview saying that he was going to call. In short. A, Pardon? That he was going to instruct. Instruct Mr. Bia to do something. Now, I don't know if we are, I don't know if that is something which was a joke. Like he talked about diplomacy, we say something in front of camera and we do something behind. Of course, he was wrong. So, if Mr. Macron is the president of France and we allege France he has a hand in the, in, in the political and economic affairs of the former French uh, uh, colonies which are members of the SEMA region, France is doing everything possible to ensure that its political and economic interest still remains. If Cameroon, if the Anglophones or the Northerners, because this crisis we're talking about Anglophones, Anglophones, we're focusing about those who in the North. Our brothers in the North are hardly hit with other crises, the jihadists and the economic crisis. So, so if Cameroonians or particularly Anglophones decide today that um, France, whatever uh, uh, personality is behind it, Today, come and take the Indian division, Sonara and the like, and we see how you can you can give us separation. I bet you, with certainty, today or the next week, there will be inclusive dialogue in Cameroon. But why? Because the Anglophone people have actually asked that you should give us 
um, some say give us an autonomous, some say we want to separate, some say we want federalism. Uh, of which France sees that you and I also know very well, like every other Cameroonian, that with a federal system or an autonomous system, all those hands which France, those uh, uh, had they got those ghost hands which France has behind the economy of Cameroon, the politics, will lose. Of which it is not a place. No, let me say there's no special status and empty status because none of you and none of your party members have been able to define what the special status is. And I think this morning, even George, uh, one of the CRTV journalists, actually reported this morning doing Cameroon Call, which he said the special status is a, is a status which is uh, is in the process. If you have to, uh, 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 <laughs> but it's in the process of definition. Do you no, have a, no, no. no? Okay, thank you, Mr. Javis. Let me give us the definition of the special status. Give us one content of the special status. Uh, should I give you? My yes. Name? One. Yes. The special status recognize the House of Chiefs. Jesus. Two. Economy. Uh, uh, the regional house will be created. Okay. Three. Anglophones will be able to control their health. Okay. Was that the problem so, that uh, was I that asked, a group I'm still naming, sir. Was that you asked me to name, I was still naming. I thought you are stopping. Okay, keep, okay. 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 So, you are so, so, now the journalist. Let me continue from where I ended. So, you see that we have now, you see that we have an empty status. Let me just learn. We have an empty status, which is another thing which was uh, uh, which was highly motivated by the French government. It doesn't just end there. The French government has gone ahead and so far to ensure that we still remain behind this. Uh, uh, under their control because actually on the 20th of May the French Parliament actually liberated some countries from the Africa from the CFR zone but you know with the other countries are using echo of which is still under French influence of which if France let Cameroon go free the Anglophone part of Cameroon what would they control you know how many percent how many billions of safe of uh, euros and dollars and um, euros that French or the French government has every year from okay. his from his French uh, African continent. So you. we need to make it very clear. Oh, oh. And Mr. Bia actually com uh, confirmed that during uh, uh, the major national oh, dialogue. Coming back to you. And, uh, what am I saying? Oh, uh, the, the Paris Peace Forum. Uh, yes, I uh, 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 understand that the Paris Peace Forum. The president told Mumu Ibrahim that they were struggling to see how they can assimilate the anglophone, but the experiment did not work. It did not work. That's the president. I don't think, Robert, that you will not argue with me. We have the videos. You not argue with me on that. Let's get that clear. I will get this message. Uh, this message read. It says, um, I appreciate the high level of political maturity and reawakening within uh, ECOWAS block. This uh, gives us a hope of a hope to achieve the goals of Julius Nyerere, kicking the stinking nature of France out of black land should be our next target. Uh, I will reserve my comments on the Dio saga. Receive greetings in capital letters from Randy Etuka in Banga Bakundu. Uh, this one really says, I think that um, the incident involving the divisional officer who shot the girlfriend is just another Oscar Pastorius case because back in South Africa, there is no way he could have accidentally shot the girlfriend more than once. It means the trigger had already been set beforehand, and it had pre and he had he had premeditated the murder. For what motive? He's still yet to confess. He's coming from Kolerene from Kumba. Kolerene from Kumba. This one reads. He says, um, a "Good afternoon to the studio. To the studio. I love the program." I'm called Alain Yumpo from Bamenda. Talking about the topic of today. The government has done nothing to resolve this problem. Tell Mr. Robert that he knows nothing on the history of Cameroon. And this other one says, um, Hello, happy Sunday to you all in the studio. Nice program on a very interesting topic. But a few of a few who are trying to mislead listeners. The man with the spotted um, suit, that's Robert, um, need to understand what is happening in the country he seems to be of a supporting cpdm party in power such that he brings facts that are unfounded robert is a cpdm militant representing his party the views of his party as far as the topic is concerned and let me read this this let me take some sms's he says um i am Dive from limbe that i'm Dive from limbe cpdm man is lying he got no point let him this um when you send us a message um the republican in the messages that you sent to us uh because the views of robert and uh, may not be his private views but the views of the party 
Good morning to you. Our president went to France to give reports on the issues in Cameroon, but not to the UN or AU. And Robert say we are not taking orders from France. From France, it's come from Frank in Manfi. Uh, the same uh, quietness just explained that they are not capable and able to resolve the crisis as France hasn't given them a, a go ahead. The same is actually being controlled by France. Uh, Robert uh, talk of the government rule. Uh, please be civil in sending us a message. Uh, Ms. Uh, thank you. Your message is gotten. If you send me messages that are insultive, I will not read them. That's why when I just start reading, I just don't feel like I'm not reading messages. This um, talking about Semak, we can do an Semak can do it. Obvious, uh, they can't they can't do it without the president. Thank you very much um, for your message. This one says, um, "Good afternoon to everyone in the studio." I think CPDM representative is not honest at all. That is purely hypocrisy trying to trying to downplay important role of ECOWAS just to suit Semak. Few months ago, you were clear on the anglophone crisis. If you think you will, if you think you will use the suffering of anglophones to get what you want, um, to I uh, thank you very much, um, gentlemen, um, for your messages. This other one reads: It says, um, "Hi, Javis. The anglophone diaspora should prepare." For an eventual indictment by the ICC for the crimes, the the crimes and for, the, for their crimes and their criminals. This one is coming from Nanga in Duwara. Uh, Nanga in Duwara, thanks for your SMS. I think, uh, gentlemen, uh, this, it's okay, Robert. I think we'll come back to you, um, Mr. Donat. We are looking at the fact that many people keep raising the issue of France, the issue of France. Uh, France is an important ally to Cameroon, an important ally to most African states in terms of giving subvention. Even the reconstruction money, France gave, I think, 40 what? billion CFI for to reconstruct North and Southwest region. Is that not a gesture that we should appreciate? To, to begin with, um, it seems Robert has forgotten the influence on, of the Westerners on Africa especially the colonizers. Their influence is still being felt up to now. Belgium is there, France is there, and all the like. But it's very clear, everyone knows in the world that the influence of France in Africa will remain like for the next 50 years. So it's quite... So is that, that is what's stopping Semak from Atlantic mm -hmm. I have said that Semak cannot... The, the, why do they... He said they lack the political and democratic will. This... I think that these presidents are trying, but... There is that hand that prevents them from doing what they can. Yes, yes, yes. What, what, what actually prevents them? There's a common. There's somebody watching. They want to know. It's it's very clear when you when each leader who have watched from events when each African leader tries to go against France, you know what happens. So most of these were packed and yeah, they were uh, signed. They, they signed before. Now, they, they, they signed before they were given that, that dependence. The CFA, yes, it's just of recent after 19, I think it's uh, five years, right? It's just of recent. Like, so, most of these things, um, they are agreements that uh, most so of the packs are going to be unpacked. Unpacked. The truth is, the truth look is, at what look at the majority of those who are in ECOWAS. Remember, majority of them are. We English mean, speaking, we have English speaking. Right. You have yes. English and French. You have English and French. The majority, the major powers, let's say in ECOWAS. So there is not that grip of France and in ECOWAS. But in 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 Semak, all are French territories. Even the former French colonies like Mali yes. itself, which is far under the ECOWAS, is not really is not controlled by yes. France anymore. Yes, we well, Senegal. Senegal. It is Senegal. Senegal. But within the so Semak, are you saying that like Cameroon is not independent? Uh, can I say something, please? Cameroon, Britain like colonized America, and America has its independent. But America has always been a, an alliance to the colonial master, Britain, and they work together. Two Cameroon things. is no. working with its former colonial master the way Britain is Logic working with, is different our, from reality, with America. Please. We should not say that France is instructing. No, we are a friendly country. Wow. When they gave 40 billion to assist reconstruction, 
Why did you people not say that no, it is wrong? Why did you put your hand inside fire? Have you seen, have you seen, else, have you seen a cheerful giver? So just the 40 people. So I'm going to say, Mr. 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 No, we should be honest. The president said they want to assimilate the various. The audience are getting us. One system. So I do think it was America. Germany, Russia, none of them likes Cameroon. Only France likes Cameroon. And France has a lot of money. 40 billion, you just give it to Cameroon. And remember, Cam America. do you know when France started lobbying to reconstruct Cameroon? Just, I think it was 2017. They already gave their willing an open hand. And remember, France is a member of the Security, Security Council. Council. One of you know there is already a complaint that has been fight against America. Look, no, we have it's okay, it's four okay. crimes which Cameroon will be one of which Cameroon will be heard for. Either crimes or against humanity. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. We'll come back. To, we'll come back to you. I'll uh, briefly, Fepsa, um, your interjection before we continue. We are slowly running out of time. Uh, uh, job is I. <laughs> I honestly think, um, I don't know, uh, if Mr. Robert is not yet the spokesperson of the CPDM, then I, I will recommend him for that position. Uh, he, is, <laughs> he is helplessly trying to defend the CPDM, the indefensible. He's trying to defend. Uh, but it is, it is a fact. Uh, I don't know whether we got recently former president of Ghana, uh, Jerry Rollins, spoke so angrily addressing Emmanuel Macron and France warning them of their influence in Africa, warning them of, of their influence in French Equatorial Africa, uh, especially those in the ECOA sub-region. It's a fact that France controls politically and economically 14 of her former French Equatorial colonies in Africa. It's a fact. If Mr. Robert is denying this, then he wants to live in denial. So uh, the, the, the truth of the matter is that SEMA cannot intervene in the Cameroon crisis I don't know the conflict the conflict that sorry pardon me i've forgotten his name the conflict that has said it the invisible or the donor donor point his name is donor yeah yeah okay yeah mr donor the invisible hand is the point is the simple point you cannot expect equatorial guinea or some uh congo brazzaville or some uh, gabon to come to talk to cameroon when france has not given the go ahead france controls french equatorial africa it is a sad reality and i think it is high time that Africa we need to come together and send France back. Okay. Um. Now, in terms of um, what um, when we look at uh, this uh, France semac relationship vis-à-vis -vis ECOWAS, um, France still have colonies in ECOWAS, like Senegal, like um, Mali. But why don't we see this kind of influence as far as it's concerned? As those territories are concerned. France, have, they, have, they have troops in Senegal, in um, uh, Mali. Uh, uh, you, you are correct, Jarvis. Um, the, the, the biggest economy in French Equatorial Africa is the Côte d'Ivoire. That's Ivory Coast. And France still very much influences things in Ivory Coast. Remember, France put Alassane Ouattara, President Alassane Ouattara, into power. And the Ivory Coast is in ECOWAS. It's in the ECOWAS sub-region. And they are still being used the statistics are there. France gets half a trillion euros yearly from French Equatorial Africa. All of them. Senegal, Mali, Cote d'Ivoire, Cameroon, all of them. There's no exception. So where do we there go from here? Yeah. As just, far as Anglophone the crisis is concerned, where do we go from here now? That Okay, it's true that we, France will always be there. So should people keep dying? Should, what should happen? How should be done? Okay, I think what should be done is simple. Uh, what should be done has been summarized or was summarized by what the, the, the person I call the Ambazonian archive. He died recently, Molan Jolly Tunde, of blessed memory. Uh, it's like a marriage. The, the, the marriage took place in 1961, and uh, some of the agreements that we had, the, the, the husband and the wife had before going into the marriage, uh, in fact, all of these, almost all of these agreements have been violated. They are no longer followed. And um, if, if, if President Paul Bia in January 1984 decided to change the name from United Republic of Cameroon to Republic of Cameroon, he, has, he is indicating two things. Either we as the people are swallowed or that they are reverting to their name, Republic of Cameroon, back in 1960 okay. when they got independence from France. So this is the way forward, Javi. The way Thank forward you. is the marriage is not working. Divorce is the way forward. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Fepsa Eric. 
Uh, briefly, before we take leave for a few donut, uh, you maybe your last word. My last word. In as much as we want to blame the government for not trying as much, I just think that the other side should be also receptive because there are many like i said in conflict resolution there are green lights and there are red lines where we will not go but what are the separatists wanting to give up to resolve this crisis do they actually want to resolve this crisis or the only way as he says eric that is to separate the marriage i think that even the american um briefly there's yes, so much time i think that uh, tibo nagi said that america will not want to be creating how do you some kind of states in africa this is not a time where we'll be creating those kind of states i just think that this is a time that will come together as a okay. Cameroonian people to solve our problem both the government both the separatists time, because time, time. nobody will solve our problem except us Cameroonians. so we must we must come together yeah last word before we take leave of you thank uh, you very much Jarvis. yeah thank you the mp3 stand is very clear at this position, the MP3 is a member of the Stand Up for Cameroon movement. At this position, we work all what is uh, is necessary for Cameroon, the solution for Cameroon at this period of time is a political transition and nothing more than a political transition. And if we have to look at the case of Mali, we can see Mali, uh, Semak and ECOWAS will say there are two different things because ECOWAS is like uh, a family, me a, a quarter meeting, and Semak is a family meeting. Of course, we know what we talk about. So, um, really, Cameroonians must also change their attitude because more of the personality, the individuals, if we change our individual attitudes and our ways of seeing okay. things, then Cameroon will be a better place. Ma and Malafé, we'll your last one before we part. Thank you. Take leave of you briefly. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, I'll just like remember that the, the, the historian has promoted you that you should be the spokesperson for CPDN. Uh, <laughs> you see, um, my prayer is for those in the Northwest and Southwest region. You were deceived not to go to school. You became illiterate and now they have asked you to pick up weapons. It's time for you to put down that weapon accept reconstruction say no to the people in the diaspora enjoying swimming in swimming pools with women around them and they dictate for you no they cannot put their, their knees on your neck say no and ask for reconstruction and return of peace and normalcy okay greetings to you mr javis and everyone on board javis Semak cannot intervene in this anglophone situation because the president of Cameroon is the head of Semak and so cannot do that solomon writing from boya uh, solomon who uh, uh we know thank you very much uh Ngomba, your message is heard uh this will what prevent sema from solving this crisis because all continues under sema regions are uh, all countries under sema regions are representative of france and that is the truth all presidents on Semak zone, I tell you, Mr. Robert, they are just France representative, and I'm called Alain Yepo from uh, Bamenda. We'll take on just this brief message before we take leave of you because we are strictly against time. Against time, this one really says, um, Good afternoon, Mr. Jarvis. If uh, the 1959 Cooperation Agreement, Article 6, clearly defined that France decides everything. It, everything including education, culture, money, that has the agreement, uh, that's the agreement ever been changed after independence. Has the agreement ever been changed? It's coming from Mr. Robert Ngong, NS in Kumba. Um, this one reads, it says, um, good afternoon to you all. Fake definition of special status by Mr. Robert. He should, um, he should, thank you. It's coming from Take the land, the clan in Bamenda. This one says, Good afternoon, good day to you in the studio. That's the truth. My country tries to go against any country that tries to go against France is in big problem. Uh, any country that tries to go against France is in big problem. It's coming from Leonard Ondongu in Yaoundé. Uh, this other one reads, It says, uh, Good afternoon to you in the studio. France is controlling Cameroon. Each time there's a problem in Cameroon, you see France ambassador coming to tell the president on what to do. It's coming from Divine in Kumba. Happy Sunday to you all in the studio. The government has done nothing in resolving this crisis. It's coming from uh, Peter in Kumba. Thanks to all those of you who took our time to participate on today's edition of our program. You should understand that House of Commons comes up every uh, Sunday at exactly uh, 12 to 1.30 p.m. A rebroadcast is every Monday at exactly 1 p.m. www.btmediagroup.net is the, is the uh, website. You can get to us on my media prime on Facebook. You can get to my media prime on Facebook such that you may want to follow other programs on my media prime. I leave you with this. No matter the matter, what matter is the matter the matter the matter what matter is your matter and what should matter for you today is that you should 
of course, the out of trouble. My name is Tamai Javis. Thanks for watching, and goodbye from Cameroon's economic capital, Douala.